Welcome to the March 23rd Diversion Authority Finance Committee meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order. First order of business is a roll call vote of the members. Mayor Dardis. Here. Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mr. Peterson. I'm here. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Mr. Costin. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Mr. Redlinger. Here. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Mayor Carlson. Mr. Reitz. Ms. Madriga. Here. Mr. Warren is present. Thank you, Don. Item two on our agenda is to approve the minutes of February 23rd, 2022. They have been uh, in the packet. They are on page three of your attachments. So moved. Thank you, Mayor. Is there a second, please? Second. And moved and second to approve the minutes of March, or excuse me, February 23rd as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye, please. Aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Item number three is the approval right, of the agenda. Hey, excuse me. Could whoever doesn't have their mic, has their mic on, turn it off if you're not involved in the conversation, please. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Steve. Approval of the agenda. I have a motion from Mayor Mahoney. Is there a second, please? Second. second. Peterson. Commissioner Peterson seconds. Been moved and seconded to approve the order of the agenda as distributed. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number four is the approval of the bills. We'll call on Mr. Kent Coston, City of Fargo. It is in, a, in your attachments and it's on page five. Mr. Coston. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, there's three vendors on the list today for a total of $254,903.55. No new vendors uh, listed on the list are Clay County, Onset Twitchell, and Cass County. So I would recommend approval of those bills. Thank you, Mr. Coston. Are there any questions of Mr. Coston? Mayor Mahoney. Mayor Dardis, just would like to remind you that Ken Coston has worked on the diversion for 10 to 12 years now, and he is going to retire April 1st. So this will be his last finance meeting for us. So I just added to entertain the committee to a round of applause for all his hard work. <laughs> and would move to approve. All right. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the bills as presented by Mr. Costin, who's soon to retire on April 1st. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Ms. Madriga. Yes. That is everyone. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you, Don. Item number five is the finance report. Again, we call on Mr. Kent Cost in the city of Fargo. Uh, yes, on uh, page 11 of the report, uh, the uh, cumulative spend on the project to date is $788,140,988. If you go to page 12, the uh, statement of position assets, or excuse me, net position, $102,869,890. And I did want to uh, add that I've had some discussion with uh, John Shockley and the management group this month. So I wanted to report in that the Bank of North Dakota obligation is ready to be drawn upon. John so craftily uh, worked out a procedure that was, was uh, a very good uh, streamlined procedure with the Bank of North Dakota. So we're able to submit just a summary financial report directly to the Bank of North Dakota and they'll turn that money uh, quite quickly. Um, but just for a protocol of understanding, we have an open commitment from the State Water Commission of funds from previous legislative action. I think it's about $18 million. And so then there gets to be the accounting issue of which set of funds do we draw first? Do we draw out the old money, the State Water Commission money, and then dive into the Bank of North Dakota money? The nuance there is the, the State Water Commission funds is 50% cost share, so we only get half of it and the uh, Bank of North Dakota is all in at 100%. So, John, shake your head if I'm saying this right, but I believe what we decided was we would, we would draw half the money in, in, out of one bucket and half out of the other so that we're showing good stewardship and we're not just leaving 
le legislative appropriations laying for long periods of time. So we're gonna draw these down sequentially. And I, I almost wanna get an action approved by this committee just to make sure that somebody doesn't you know, think that we should be doing it a different way. And that's why I wanted to report that out to the, to the committee that this is what we intend to do. John and the group is, is good with that. And I think the Bank of North Dakota people are also good with that. So that's what I would recommend. We just, when we draw the, for those reimbursements, we'll, we'll draw out of both buckets. And my accounting team will keep track of that. Thank you, Mr. Costin. Questions? So are you trying to recommend policy? Well, I think it's more of an accounting protocol, and I just wanted to report it to you so that it doesn't become an issue in the, in the future. And I would just like this group to pass a motion to draw sequentially out of both buckets of money. Because I can see us being criticized in the future if we have funds that a legislative body perceives as being not being utilized. So if we can show constant uh, draw against those pools of money, then I think that should help with any... Uh, would uh, we'll move certainly. to approve that new policy with the recommendations of Mr. Costin. Is there a second, please? Second. Mr. Steen seconds. Been moved and second to approve the financial report with the suggestions presented by Mr. Costin this afternoon. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, uh, I'm going to call for a roll call vote, being we're having a policy thing change here. Don, would you please? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Ms. Madriga. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Item number six is an executive director's financial report. Mr. Paulson. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, I'll start out first with the annual revenue report, and, and this is... Uh, um, if you read on the bottom here, revenues were reversed out uh, 2022 and moved back to 2021. This is really just a function of when the sales tax revenues come in and how we're tracking it. So nothing really to report here um, as far as forecast year 2022 is concerned. Um, and I believe, Kent, that those sales tax will start kicking in next month as far as 22. So um, there is a there is a lag between when those dollars come in and how we track it. So that's in case you're wondering why there's a negative revenue. That that's the uh, it's just an accounting practice there. So I'll move on to uh, the overall status, and I, I don't think I'll dig into the level two because you know as we sit here at the end of uh, February, um, you know we've really only accounted for 14 million dollars of our overall 194 million cash budget. And as you can see here, a majority of those costs have been in uh, City of Fargo projects and reimbursement for those, uh, and then the lands and impacted property mitigation. So um, everything in budget, obviously, at this point in the year, uh, majority of our expenditures in the last two months have been related to reimbursement for in-town levies and, and storm sewer stations, and then lands and impacted property mitigation. So. Um, just reiterating what Kent had mentioned, you know, total expenditures uh, for the project um, to date is at uh, 788. Uh, so that's all I have, um, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Questions for the gentleman? This is only an informational item. We'll move on to item number seven, which is the contracting actions. Again, Mr. Paulson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are three contracting actions for the committee to consider. Um, I'll go through these one at a time. The first one is uh, managed IT services for the MFDA. Uh, we are in the process of moving into a building and co-locating with Jacobs and the Red River Valley Alliance and ASN. Um, and so this service agreement will be for Marco to provide IT services um, as well as help us get set up in, in the new office. Um, and, and those services will be ongoing. Uh, we were receiving those services from Cass County, but uh, in talking with the county's IT department, they felt um, as we moved over to this new location and co-located, it would be better off for us to use a vendor that, uh, that the other uh, folks are also using, and it would be more efficient, they'd be more attentive. So... Um, 
Task Order 2, Amendment 0 is for Cass County Electric Co-op. This is related to their utility MOU and utility relocates. And item number three is a service agreement for um, Flint Group. Uh, and this is, as this committee is aware, you know, we've been toying around with redoing our website. Um, this would be a contract to um, update our website, make it more user friendly, uh, provide better content and be more readily available for interaction with the public. Um, and so we did do an RFP for that. Flint uh, Group was the, the lowest cost provider and um, w what we felt the most qualified to do the work. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Any questions for any of these uh, items, these contracting items? Hearing none. Uh, this is an actionable item, so I uh, ask for a roll call vote, please. Move to approve. Thank you, uh, Mayor Mahoney. Is there a second, please? Second. Mr. Steen, second's been moved and second to approve the contracting actions. Uh, the three items as presented by Mr. Paulson. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll, roll call, please, Don. Mayor Dardis? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Costin? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Redlinger? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. Ms. Madriga? Yes. I would note to the committee that uh, the Diversion Authority Board approvals of the 2022 cash budget changes. We sometimes have those on a monthly basis. There's nothing for approval this month. So we'll be moving on to item number eight, other business. Uh, first one is the DA Board approved MOU and agreement actions. Uh, there's numerous uh, MOUs. Mr. Shockley will be presenting. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have a number of MOUs for the Finance Committee to recommend for approval. Uh, the first MOU is with Moorhead Public Service and the Diversion Authority, and that is for utility relocations occurring across the Diversion Channel. Uh, specifically, uh, for anybody who's interested, uh, Moorhead Public Service has a transmission line that crosses the Diversion Channel just to the west of West Fargo, uh, kind of along the 32nd <coughs> Avenue corridor, uh, and it just crosses, currently crosses over the Cheyenne, and it'll eventually cross over the Diversion Channel, and that just needs to be uh, relocated and realigned for the new construction. Uh, the second MOU is with Dickey Rural Networks. Uh, this is actually a new utility provider, um, and so they'll, uh, it outlines their responsibility for installation of network fiber crossing <coughs> the areas within this uh, a diversion channel. Um, the next one is another township MOU for the diversion channel. That is with Berlin Township. Uh, that addresses the design, construction, operations, and maintenance of the diversion channel project. It allocates the responsibilities between the diver diversion uh, and the township. Um, it essentially follows the same form as the other uh, township MOUs. Uh, it does allow for the reimbursement of expenses up to three thousand uh, dollars annually for the diversion project uh, mm -hmm. until substantial completion. Post construction is fifteen hundred dollars annually. That is consistent with our other MOUs, and then a one-time uh, lost tax revenue payment of nine thousand and fifteen thousand reimbursement for attorney fees. So very consistent with our M other MOUs or townships. Nothing, nothing unusual uh, are there. Also very happy to uh, let the Finance Committee know that we reached a final agreement with the City of Christine uh, for the construction of their flood control elements. Um, as part of the settlement agreement, uh, we needed to construct, the Diversion Authority needs to construct uh, flood control around the City of Christine. Uh, the alternative was to buy flowy easements within the City of Christine. Um, as part of the settlement agreement, we agreed to the construction of the project uh, but we shifted the responsibility for bidding it, constructing it, overseeing it to the city of Christine, and essentially we're just providing funding for it and oversight. Um, and really the idea there is that uh, the local authorities uh, with our oversight will do a better job of managing the project and having to acquire land and work with the local, uh, local residents uh, rather than having the diversion authority come in and do those sorts of issues. 
And then the final item is an update to the MOU with the Cass County regarding the provisions of HR services. Um, and as the Diversion Authority has brought on an HR consultant, uh, we changed some of the provisions of the MOU, and we did extend the period of performance from January 1st, 2022 through uh, December 31st of 2026. Um, happy to answer any questions, but pretty run-of-the-mill business for the uh, authority, and we're, we're getting close to the end on the third-party MOUs, which is nice. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Are there any questions? This is an actionable item. We can take Move all to approve. of them at once. Thank you. Mayor Mahoney moves. Is there a second, please? Second. Commissioner Sedin second. It's been moved and second to approve the MOU and agreement actions as presented by Mr. Shockley, items one through five. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Ms. Madriga. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Next order of business is a program information points. Mr. Paulson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This item is just for your information, but we did include updated talking points in the finance uh, packet as well, as the board members will see that in the board packet. Um, so just to take a look at those, um, we wanted to make those available um, just to kind of update uh, uh, board members and finance committee members of some of the recent uh, uh, activities over the last few months um, and give you that information if you receive any questions from the general public about um, specific items related to the authority. So. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Could you tell us about the email we got recently about the three awards, please? Uh, absolutely, uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, we have uh, now acquired our third award uh, for the project. Um, all three awards recognize the project as uh, um, a world-class um, P3 deal, and I think the marketplace has certainly uh, reiterated that. Um, Mr. Shockley and I have been in contact with a number of folks that are just amazed at how quickly the commercial and financial close occurred after the, after the award of the bid. That is not typical in P3 projects, um, and I think it's uh, indicative of how well we put together the contracting package um, and how well we uh, worked to secure it, all of the different financing mechanisms that we had in place. Um, so we are also expecting, uh, there's another award ceremony this week. Um, we are expecting to uh, acquire a fourth award. So they keep coming in and we didn't do this to win awards, but I think those awards uh, certainly indicate um, the hard work that everyone's put into this project and is certainly being recognized by national and international organizations. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman. Please, Mayor Mahoney. City of Fargo would be happy to display those awards in our commission chambers for a couple of weeks if you'd like, Joel. We're happy to do that. And Bernie, when he gets his new fire station, he'll probably have it out there. You can pick them up after we're done with them. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll let, I'll let the board chair decide where the goes. <laughs> county, probably. <laughs> I, think just, I think they just ended up in Cass County. <laughs> what mayor? Come on. <laughs> I'd put it to a vote of myself, and I'll determine where they Put them in your cave. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Thank you for that update, Mr. Paulson. Um, I think it's pertinent to note at this time of, you know, all of the wonderful work that all of the staff has done, the consultants have done, the Diversion Board has done both past and present. We wouldn't be here today without some extremely strong leadership uh, from within our communities and our states uh, over the years. So uh, as all of these accolades are starting to come to fruition, uh, we have a lot of people to be thankful for. And uh, this was certainly a team effort, and it's went on for 10 or 15 years. So... Uh, uh, it's, it's nice to finally be in this position, and congratulations to everybody engaged, everybody involved. With that, our next meeting is going to be April 27th. Uh, before we leave, again, I was going to make a couple of comments also about Mr. Costin. Uh, 
in my short time that I've been on the Diversion Authority, uh, working with him and uh, the work that he does with regard to finances, and paying the bills, and all of those types of things, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to work with an, uh, a true professional. And so uh, you're going to be missed, and uh, you probably know that already, but uh, on behalf of a very grateful Diversion Authority, past and present, thank you very much for all of your efforts, Mr. Costin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, again, this isn't all about me. There's an incredibly talented group of uh, finance uh, specialists in our office that are serving as fiscal agents for the Diversion Authority, and they've enjoyed that challenge. And uh, I'll never forget the day I walked into our senior person and I said, hey, guess what? You're going to get to be the opportunity to participate in a $2.8 billion project. And she was like, <laughs> just kind of a blow, blown askew. I, I said, no, this is a good thing. This, this is a really good thing because it'll be on your resume. It'll be a, a story that you'll tell that nobody else in this whole world has experienced because this is brand new territory. It's awesome to be involved, and I've really appreciated the ride along for many years, too. So thank you very much. Again, we're very grateful. Yeah. Our next finance meeting is uh, April 27th, as I said. With that, we stand adjourned. Thank you.